Hey, while you in the first five seconds of the video, go ahead, like and subscribe. You go to family reunions? I've been to some, but I haven't been lately. What about you, Dallas? Family reunion? What's the family reunion? What's the name? Family name? Mm -hmm. Crackers. Color. Hmm? Crack? Color. No. Color. No, seriously. C what's the C U L L A R? That's the name of the family? Yeah. Color. Wow. <laughs> I thought you was being funny. <laughs> but the but the color, that's the name of the someone's last name. Yeah. So no, where do no. you think that last name came from? From the mask. Master. Yeah, it came from Master. Master Johnson. So, what do you think happened for us to get that name? What else came with that? Whatever he wanted us to do. Religion? Yeah. Whatever he told you to do. How we eat? Yeah. How we sleep? What well, holidays we celebrate? Uh, All of that. How so we that, talk to each other? How we talk to each other? How, how we love one another? Exactly. How we get together with one another? You know, and respect one another? But love God and respect people. Exactly. Good morning. My name is Hosea. We're, we're Israel United in Christ Chicago chapter. Today we'll be giving a, a presentation on Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter. One of the reasons why we go with Deuteronomy 28 is because it gives an insight on who the real Israelites are. So we're going to get in depth with it. Let's get the first slide. So Israel United in Christ, this is our message, our mission statement from a message from our bishop. Bishop Nathaniel. Israel United in Christ Incorporated was founded in 2003. Our goal is to change the hearts and minds of our people. Blacks and Hispanics must learn the truth that they are the biblical 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. Disobedience to God's laws has been the root of all of our troubles. Blacks and Hispanics everywhere suffer the same social, racial, social, economic problems worldwide. Voting has not helped us. The Christian churches have failed us. It's time for a change. In these last days, we must give the Bible's medicine to sick people. Then, and only then, will things truly change. All right, so we're going to get real in depth with the Deuteronomy chapter 28. Read, verse, uh, read 1 and 1. Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 1. You're familiar, Ruby, with the book of... Uh, the Bible, are you familiar with the story of Moses? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, so Moses led the children of Israel out of Egypt. Mm -hmm. And when we went through the Red Sea, we went to the wilderness, he had introduced God's laws back to the people because we was in Egypt and we learned the ways of Egypt over 400 years. So God had to reinstall these laws back into his people. So that's what's going on in Deuteronomy the chapter 28. So read verse 1. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 1, verse 1. Mm -hmm. These be the words which Moses spake unto all Israel. So these be the words that Moses spake unto all Israel, the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans today. Read. On this side, Jordan, in mm -hmm. the wilderness, in the plain over against the Red Sea. So this was what's going on in the wilderness. Read on. Between Paran and Tophel, uh -huh. and Laban, and Hazaroth. And dies I have. So this demographic area is letting you know this is going on in the continent of Africa. Is that it? Yes, sir. Okay, now let's get into some curses. Read verse 15, chapter 28, verse 15. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, and verse 15. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So, Ruby, you have children, correct? Mm hmm So, when you tell your children, hey, look, I want you to get good grades in school. I want you to keep your room clean. 
I want you to respect the elders. These are rules or matters that you're teaching your children. Am I right about that? Correct. Mm -hmm. And what typically happens when children don't want to do what you ask them or tell them to do? They get chastised. They get chastised. Mm -hmm. So this is what God is essentially telling to his children, mm -hmm. the children of Israel. He said, look, do what I say mm -hmm. and you will be blessed. If you don't do what I say, you're going to be cursed, meaning I'm going to punish you. So read it one more time. But it shall come to pass mm -hmm. if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. So that word hearken means to hear. If you would not hear the voice that I'm telling you, these words that I'm telling you, read on. To observe, to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day. So we have to carefully make sure that we are following what God says. Read on. That all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So we know that curse is not something that's good. A curse is usually identified as something that is bad. So God says bad things are going to happen to you if you don't listen to me. So what we're going to do, we're going to dig into some of these bad things that, that will happen to us if we refuse to obey what God says. So if you don't want to follow my household rules, then I'm going to punish you. I'm going to chastise you. Question. Yes. Go back to verse number one. Verse, uh, we don't, back. well, okay. it's not on this slide. Okay. But you want to read chapter one, verse one, or 28 and one? Okay, I thought you said 28 and one. Yeah, right. I told him to read verse one and one. Oh, one chapter and one. one. Okay, that's okay. Okay. All right, read verse 16. Verse 16. Cursed shalt thou be in the city. And cursed shalt thou be in the field. So God says, look, because you didn't want to listen to me, curse you're going to be in the city, and curse you're going to be in the field. Mm -hmm. Ruby, are you familiar with the Tulsa massacre in 1921? Mm, not really. I, no, I, I don't think so. Have you heard of Black Wall Street? Hundreds of white people descended upon Black Wall Street armed. Black residents withdrew behind the railroad tracks that marked off the Greenwood District. Some of them were armed and fought back, but they were outnumbered by the white mob, which shot their way through. The white mob murdered, they looted, and they set fire to Black Wall Street. Yeah. There was a song um, uh, that a group made where it says, um, what's the name of the song? Uh, he dropped the bomb on me. You dropped the bomb on me, mm -hmm. baby. That was, that was, that was basically talking about the mass, the Tulsa massacre. What happened in that massacre? Because what happened, we had Black Wall Street. Mm -hmm. After we came out of slavery, uh -huh. we went into various parts of the United States. Mm -hmm. And we started to build communities for ourselves. Mm -hmm. We started to have our own hospitals, mm -hmm. started to have our own banks, mm -hmm. our own schools. Our own communities. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And what happened here was you had some gentlemen on the elevator mm -hmm. and you had a white woman claim that she was touched. Ooh, and by an angel probably, huh? <laughs> well, when you look at it, now the end result was they dropped bombs literally I from airplanes on Tulsa, Oklahoma. Just in that area or Tulsa, the Oklahoma and Green and Greenwood. Greenwood they destroyed the whole community, killed over oh, hundreds okay. of people. Uh -huh. This, I think there's two survivors that's still alive right now from, from this massacre. Those are all black people. And they, all black people. And they haven't gotten any type of retributions from yeah. that at all. Mm -hmm. So this is, this is an example of being cursed in the city. Mm -hmm. So God says, if you don't do what I say, as a okay. people, mm -hmm. as a whole, mm -hmm. of a nation of people, mm -hmm. you're going to be cursed in the city. Yeah. This is a prime example. You can even look at today, the yes. city of Chicago. Yes. Cursed in the city. Okay. Yeah, the world. Everywhere where you see us at. Yeah. Because the Bible said we were going to get scattered through the four corners of the globe. Give me that in Deuteronomy 4 27. He said that we were going to get scattered throughout the four corners of the globe. Mm -hmm. So everywhere we at, whether it's in Brazil, whether it's in Australia, whether it's in the continent of Africa, whether it's in Europe. We're going to be cursed in the city and also cursed in the field. Read that real quick. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 4 and verse 27. Mm -hmm. And the Lord shall scatter you among the nations. So the Lord, the same Lord that said, if you don't listen to me, I'm going to scatter you among who? The nations. The nations. Read on. 
and ye shall be left few in number among the heathen. So now, what you're seeing is every nation under the earth, we are in the, in the, in the grasp of those nations. Meaning we have to be assimilated to their way of living and we have to do exactly what they say to do as a punishment. And we're going to get into more of those punishments because the Lord is using those nations as a belt to chastise us. Alright, so go back to uh, verse 16. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28 and verse 16. Mm -hmm. Cursed shalt thou be in the city, and cursed shalt thou be in the field. Are you familiar with these images right here, Ruby? Mm -hmm. Yeah, hello. So this is our forefathers and foremothers picking cotton. Mm -hmm. This is an example of being cursed in the field. Mm -hmm. Look, you have a young child. And you know cotton weighs, it, has, it doesn't weigh a lot. Mm -hmm. we, it's very light. So we had to pick from sun up to sun down a certain poundage of, of cotton. And if we didn't pick the certain poundage, what would happen to get you? Who? The master. The master would get you. Mm -hmm. How would he get you? By beating you. By beating you. By raping mm -hmm. the women. By castrating the men. There's plenty of movies that you could watch that will show what happened and will actually give you an illustrated version of cursed in the city and cursed in the field. Let's bring it up to today. How are we cursed in the field today? How would you say? By changing samples, putting us in jail, mm -hmm. killing us, um, raping, raping take, um, the kids off. yeah, taking our children. Our children. Okay. All right. So let's look at it like this here. You work here, correct? I do. Now, how long have you been working here? About eight years. Eight years, right? <laughs> Have you been able to advance in this company? Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> no. Are you getting paid oh, you the wages? Absolutely not. Not. Oh, okay. Have you been getting paid the wages that you think you deserve? No, I haven't. So what do they even typically call this? They call this a work field, right? Right. So if if you're sitting here, when God says the world was made for us, right? Absolutely. Because what we're teaching is, and you wasn't in here early. I don't know if you heard. No, nah, I was trying to find some people to come in here. Okay, <laughs> fine. So, Miss White. So, we're teaching that the Israelites, the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, we are the Israelites according to the Bible. Absolutely. We are, we are chosen God's, people. We are God's chosen people. Mm -hmm. His children. He made the world for our sake. So, he said, look, if you don't listen to what I say, I'm going to punish you. Mm -hmm. Just like any parent would do to their children. You got children, right, sir? What's your name? Dallas. Dallas. So when your children, when you say, tell your son, hey, look, you're going to open the door for women and let them go in. If, they, if he don't do it, what do you typically would do? It's a repercussion. It's a, some type of repercussion. Maybe a conversation at first. Mm -hmm. But if he say, man, I'm not doing that. Now you, now you got to you gotta, you gotta do a little chastisement. That's the same thing with God did. He gave us rules. We said, man, I ain't doing it. All right, okay, you don't want to do it. So now you're going to have to go into captivity. Now you're going to have to be cursed in the field. Now you're going to have to pick cotton from sun up to sundown. And if you don't bring a certain poundage, I'm going to rape your wife. I'm going to take your child away from you. So these are some of the things that happen. So being cursed in the field today is we don't get, the, we don't get paid the same wages that our other counterparts from other nations Okay. You know what I'm saying? So you've been here for eight years. You haven't moved up in the company. You're not getting compensated the way you think you should deserve. Mm -hmm. But if someone from another nation, say a white woman in the same position as you, she'll get paid more. She'll get promoted quickly, quickly. But it doesn't happen for you. That's an example of being cursed in the field. So okay. let's get some more curses. Give me, um, jump to uh, verse 28. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28 and verse 28. Mm -hmm. The Lord shall smite thee with madness and blindness and astonishment of heart. So, Ruby, mm -hmm. when the Lord says, I'm going to smite you, what does that typically mean, biblically? Smite. Anybody can answer, really. Something unusual would happen uh, to you other than what you know the norm. Okay, because that's not a word that we typically use today. Oh. <laughs> okay. Smite. What do you think it means, Dallas? Uh, 
slaps me. Some correction with the, some, some harsh correction. <laughs> what did you say, Ruth? Or slap you. Some, you know, normally in our culture, you... Right. You it's, you're going to bring some type of physical restraint or strike. harm to someone. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to smite you. Mm -hmm. So the Lord said, the Lord shall smite thee with madness. When, like, who remember Rahm Emanuel? Mm -hmm. I do. The mayor. Mm -hmm. yeah. When he first became mayor, one of the things that he did was that he shut down the mental facilities in the city of Chicago. All of them. Mm -hmm. All of them. Mm -hmm. Start closing down schools. When you look at what he did and look at today, mm -hmm. what's going on in the city of Chicago we right got now? So many crazy people walking around. Yeah. Mentally challenged people. So, but why do you think we're mentally challenged? Because we yeah. need some help. We need like some help. The, yeah. There's you're a lot of trauma in us, correct? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Because if you're a 12 year old and your father is locked up, mm -hmm. maybe you got molested by your uncle. Uh -huh. You done sold some drugs, you done seen some sh gunshots go on. That'll mess with you mentally. Right. Then That's you grow up, you know what I'm saying? And now you start to perpetuate that same behavior. Mm -hmm. You have children. Just imagine if that happened when, you're, when we was in slavery. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. When you seen your mother being raped, mm -hmm. when you seen your dad being uh, tied up to horses mm -hmm. and his limbs getting... And now you gotta grow up and you gotta teach your child not to talk, not don't look at mass in his eyes, don't talk to him a certain way. So this trauma has been growing in us and we've been teaching it to our kids. We've been growing up with it. So now God is saying, go back to uh, 28. He, he said, the Lord shall smite thee with madness. That's how that happened. He smit us with madness because of the trauma that we've been through and we never had any type of clinical result or resolve from it we didn't have no one to come and say hey look no no psychologist sit us down and, and help us deal with some of these psychological problems so now when you look at it today you got 12 13 year olds that's carjacking people mm -hmm. killing, killing people. you got parents killing their kids yeah. so god said i'm gonna smite thee with my with madness and what and blindness mm -hmm. uh-huh and astonishment of heart. So when the Bible says astonishment of heart, mm -hmm. what do you think that means, Dallas? Uh, all just uh, an astonishment of heart, a, um, a deep feeling that you probably can't understand. Okay. <laughs> what do you think, Ruby? I believe it's something to deal with uh, the mind. The mind. Uh, okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah. The mind. Perfect. So yeah. Both of y'all are correct. So but I like what you said. Mm -hmm. Because the heart, when the Bible says the heart, mm -hmm. it's talking about your mind. Yeah. So the Bible, God is saying, I'm going to smite thee with madness and blindness. Mm -hmm. Blindness because we don't understand today that we're brothers and sisters. Yeah. We're divided by religion. Mm -hmm. We're divided by politics. Mm -hmm. We're divided by money, mm -hmm. social status. We're divided by skin tone, mm -hmm. hair length. Yeah. Gangs, uh -huh. all sorts of things. We don't even know who we are. What's your nationality, Miss White? <laughs> I'm I'm black. You're black. <laughs> What's your nationality? I'm a descendant of Africa. <laughs> descendant of Africa. What's I'm your African nationality? African American. Oh. African American. <laughs> you see how we're the same? Uh -huh. We gave three different, different things. Answers. <laughs> that lets you know that this Bible is real and it's talking about us. So when it's, the Bible says astonishment of mind, when you look at our youth today, you'll see our women out here have lyrics speaking over the airwaves talking about their sexual uh, prowess, where they're saying, hey, look, my coochie's pink and my booty hole's brown. Mm -hmm. Then you got young men talking about, hey, look, I'm going to shoot you down, bang, bang, bang. Mm -hmm. That's an astonishment. Like how the greatest people on earth now are being bought so low where they are degraded to, to this type of behavior. Mm -hmm. That's an astonishment. It's like, man, how do we get like this? Mm -hmm. The other nations look at us and they be like, man, these, these, these mm -hmm. niggas ain't That's it. <laughs> but you gotta realize, they created, they helped create the environment that we live in. Absolutely. But it's still our fault. Absolutely. Why is it our fault, Ruby? Because you got a mind of your own and that's the heart of man. So you, if you are 
godly inclined, I'll say it that mm -hmm. way, uh, of, who, of who you are, then you won't fall for that. Okay. Why do you yeah. think it's our fault, Miss White? I like that answer. Uh, I think it's our fault because we have lost our way. We haven't, everything starts at home. Mm -hmm. And if we don't teach the youth where they come from, and they don't know. They just don't know. They just lost because nobody shown shown them the path that they need to take. Okay. That's what I'ma say. What about you, Dallas? How's it our fault? Similar accountability. Uh, yeah. You were taught, or if you haven't, you were shown somewhere, and just, just knowing right from wrong. And um, with actually the, the lack of ability to change or want to change. Okay. Because you know what's going on. The ability to change is you just <laughs> you stuck. Yeah. You can't get out of it. And On the surface, social media. Y'all answers is correct, but let's go back to what we read earlier because mm -hmm. that's the core of it. Mm -hmm. That's the foundation. Mm -hmm. Okay. Go back to the slide, verse fifteen, and I want you to read verse fifteen. Then we're gonna jump back to twenty-eight again. Okay. Read verse fifteen. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter twenty-eight, and verse fifteen. Now, Dallas, remember. Moses grew up in, in Egypt, mm -hmm. right? God told him, look, I want you now to get my people up out of Egypt. We was in Egypt in slavery for over 400 years. How you yeah. doing, ma'am? All right. We was, in, we was in Egypt in slavery for over 400 years, learned the ways of Egypt. So we had, God took us out of there, brought us into the wilderness, and now he had to reintroduce his way of living to us. Because we was in Egypt just, we was horrible. We was living just like the Egyptians. You want to know what we was doing as Egyptians? <laughs> we were having sex with dogs. Mm -hmm. We were uh, dressing up as women, as men. We were eating, drinking blood. We was doing everything that the Egyptians did. God said, no, you're going to do what I say do. Mm -hmm. But if you don't do it, punishment is going to come. Mm -hmm. So, read verse 15. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, and verse 15. Mm -hmm. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, mm -hmm. to observe to do all his commandments. That's the key. To observe to do everything that I say. If you don't do it, what's going to happen? And his statutes, which uh -huh. I command thee this day, that all these curses. All these curses. So, us not knowing who we are as a people, that's a curse. That's a curse. Do you go to family reunions? No. What about you, Ruby? Family you? Family Yes. Mm -hmm. You do? Mm -hmm. How you doing, ma'am? <clears throat> do you go to family reunions? I've been to some, but I haven't been lately. What about you, Dallas? Family reunion? What's the family reunion? What's the name? Family name? Mm -hmm. Crackers. Color. Hmm? Crack? Color. No. Color. No, seriously. What's C the name? C U L L A R. That's the name of the family? Yeah. Color. Wow. <laughs> I thought you was being funny. <laughs> but the but the color, that's the name of the someone's last name. Yeah. So you know, where do you think that last name came from? From the master. Master. It came from master. Master Johnson. So what do you think happened for us to get that name? What else came with that? Whatever he wanted us to do. Religion? Yeah. Whatever he told you. How we eat, yeah. how we sleep, what well, holidays we celebrate, uh, all of that. How so we that, talk to each other. How we talk to each other. How, how we love one another. Exactly. How we get together with one another, you know, and respect one another, but love God and respect people. Exactly. But study yourself and land your business and then you'll be okay. So Sometimes the devil will knock on your door with trouble, but you can't, you know, but you have to pray for those who who mistreat you and frankly mistreat you and hurt you, you know, and forgive them for what they do. But see, forgiveness is for you. Okay. What's your name? Uh, Payne. I'm Colleen Payne. Colleen Payne. My name is Hosea Israel. Hosea Israel. I'm glad you're here. Thank you. <laughs> We're so going. I say, but see, God said, I'm going to get up and I'm going to go and see what I can do, you know, because I love to read my Bible. I love to talk about God. I love to be friendly and, you know, go on because I was raised. And a church. You're okay. going to have to go every single Sunday. So look, Colleen, I'm going to bring you up to speed on what we're going over. Okay. What we're going over is we are teaching that the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, we are the true biblical Israelites. When you open up your Bible, that is basically a story about you. 
You are reading about you. You're reading your history. You're reading your guidelines that you're supposed to live by. And you're reading prophecy of things that's going to happen in the future. And what is going to happen to you if you disobey God. You know what I'm saying? So, if, our, if, if Master taught us how he wanted to teach us, then that's a form of, uh, go back to uh, 28. Go back to 28, read that. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, and verse 28. Uh -huh. The Lord shall smite thee with uh -huh. madness uh -huh. and blindness uh -huh. and astonishment of heart. So that's how that happened. Because we went into slavery, now he said, hey, look, you know what? Uh, you're off on Sunday. Go to church. You, you, you service God on, 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 on Sunday. Mm -hmm. And you know what? That God now looks like me. I'm God. So now we got an image of God that's, that's, that's distorted. It's not real. False. It's false. So this is that smitten with madness that we've been teaching our children since that day. Since that day, all the way up to today. So that's centuries of us being smitten with madness and astonishment of heart and being blind, not knowing who we are. Read 29. Verse 29. And thou shalt grow at noonday. What does it mean to grow? Dallas. Trying to grab something, right? So I want you to really picture that now as this is being said. Read it again. And thou shalt grope at noonday. As what? As the blind gropeth in darkness. So just imagine the room is dark, right? And you're trying to feel your way through. You know what I'm saying? So you won't run into anything. So God is saying, look, you're going to grope at noonday. At noonday is bright outside, right? It's bright. You can see, but you're still trying to find and feel your way through. Mm -hmm. now, haven't you felt like that's what you've been trying to do all your life? Mm -hmm. Like, man, I know I'm supposed to be doing something better in life, man. I know I'm supposed to be this, supposed to be that. Because when we was in our youth and our innocence, we had all these dreams and aspirations, but something happened as we kept going on in life. Even when we sit in the, in the church pews, when we used to listen to what the pastor said, as we got older, we was like, man, something ain't right about this. Hey, anybody ever had that thought? Anybody? Am I the only one? I have. I have. Mm -hmm. Even some of the things that your parents done told you. Maybe your parents told you about Santa Claus. Mm -hmm. Like, man, Santa Claus, come on. You mean, you mean a big white guy came down the chimney and bought these and brought these presents for me, Mom? You know what I'm saying? So at some point, you start to, like, second guess these things because you're trying to find and feel your way through. So God is saying, look, thou shalt grope at noonday as the blind grope within darkness. Read on. And thou shalt not prosper in thy ways. So as a nation of people, we have been prospered in our ways. Even when we try to get into these for, for fraternities and sororities to try to make ourselves better as a community, we still have to prosper. Because we got Michael Jordan, we got Jay-Z, we got Michael Johnson, mm -hmm. uh, Magic Johnson. They are billionaires. But what have they done to better our condition as a people? Not, nothing, not nothing, a thing. Nothing. We got, look, there's over 100, 100 black elected officials in the state of Illinois right now. But has anything changed? No. Their hearts haven't changed. Hmm? Their hearts have not changed. They haven't changed and at all. Until that happens, it ain't no change. They got to change according to what we read right the here. The word, yes. Until we start coming back to that, yeah, that's, absolutely. you know what, Ruby? That's all the way. That is pretty much the That's grand it. opening and grand closing of what That's we're talking it. about. Mm -hmm. Repentance. Gotcha. Oh. Yes. If until we repent, none of this is going to change. We're going to keep groping at noonday what God is saying. And we're not going to prosper in our ways. Read on. And thou shalt be only oppressed and spoiled evermore. And no man shall save thee. What politician has saved us? Nobody. What revolutionary has saved us? Have we not been oppressed? I gotta go punch in for my lunch. We've been oppressed forever okay. more. So what is this saying? This is proof. This uh, the scripture that we just went through, along with this, true. this right here proves that we are the true children of God. Yeah. We are the true children of God. Go back to that slide that's shown with the past that. 
Okay, let's look at this. Who's familiar with, with this brother right here? Emmett Till. Emmett Till. What happened to Emmett Till, sis? He was uh, killed by his wife down in uh, Mississippi. Mm -hmm. Uh, some brothers from um, Greenwood, Mississippi. They killed, killed him. Why did they kill him? Why did because they say he whistled at a white woman? They say he whistled at a white woman. Yeah. yeah. And then they had some of our people to go fetch him. Mm -hmm. They put him on a pickup truck and they took him to some white men. And the white man eventually murdered him. They found him in a swamp. Just figured. This is how he looked afterwards. Yeah. This is part of being cursed in the city. The Civil Rights Union movement. Anybody familiar with the Civil Rights Movement? I know you're familiar with Dr. Martin Luther King. Oh, yeah. He marched in Marquette Park right down the street. Mm -hmm. This place is, mm -hmm. what is it called? Marquette facility, Marquette right? Village, yeah. Marquette Village. So, read, read verse 20, uh, 29 again. Verse 29. Mm -hmm. And thou shalt grope at noonday uh -huh. as the blind grope within darkness. So, this is us trying to find our way in the Civil Rights Union movement. We were trying to find our way. We had mighty leaders step up. Martin Luther King, mm -hmm. he stepped up. Malcolm X, mm -hmm. you had Marcus Garvey. You had a lot of prominent black men that, and women that were stepping up trying to uh, get us out of the oppression that we were in. Nation is men leading by example. Oh, my.